Okay, so today you're going to use motion to put together a laser beam video. We're going to start with a video from just a motion project. And we're going to use this broadcast 720 and we'll change the frame rate to 24 frames per second. The time code here by default is 10 seconds. We want to give ourselves maybe a little bit more time, so we're going to change that to 20 seconds. And then click open. So this is motion. Um, right here on the left hand side is uh, right now it's our file browser. So this is where you can search through your computer. You can find the file that you're looking for. Uh, the other tabs are the library. So this is where you can access a lot of the built-in features and the inspector is where we get to um, make adjustments to the different things that we use in our video. So you need to find the two videos that you've downloaded so they'll be in your downloads folder. Uh, for me they're elsewhere so I'll grab those. So we're looking for the two videos called laser beam and target. So I want to grab the laser beam with the target, click on it, and drag it into this group here. So now we'll see we've got our video. Next we're going to grab the video without the target, and we'll put it in the group, but we want to put it just below that. Oops. We can delete this group. Now we're going to double click on the word group, and we're going to rename it, and we'll uh, call this footage. So now we'll change this here, the zoom, to fit, and actually we'll change it to, sorry, let's go to 25. So we can see right here, this square here, this rectangle actually, is our screen. Our film is actually too big for the screen, so we need to resize it. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on both of our clicks here so that we can resize them at the same time. So we'll click on the first one, hold down shift and click on the other one so that we're working with both and that way it'll be the same size. Now we're going to go to this top left corner, hold down the shift button, and we're going to resize it so that it fits pretty close to this corner here. Now again, holding shift, we're going to click on the other bottom right corner, click and drag it in. So now we have our footage in our screen. Okay, good. So this is our footage. And if we uncheck here, you can see we've got our two different foot, two different video clips in there. The one on top has our target, and if we take that check off, you'll see it's exactly the same because I used a tripod, but our target is no longer in there. Good. So now we can change our zoom here to fit, and we'll just bring this in a little bit closer. Now we're going to bring in our laser beam. And to do that, we're going to add a new group. So you'll notice this new group is above our footage group. We'll double click on the name and we'll call this laser beam. And it's in this group that we're going to put our laser beam. Now we're going to go over to our library. And you'll see in the library there's all sorts of filters, behaviors, generators, particle emitters. What we want is a shape. And you'll notice down here there's a neon rectangle. You can choose the blue rectangle, you can choose whatever you want for your laser beam. Personally I like the neon rectangle, it looks good, it works. So what we're going to do is we're going to click and drag this neon rectangle and bring it into our laser beam group. So now you can see our laser beam is right here on screen. So what we need to do is we're going to move our playhead, move it forward to maybe a second or so into our video. Good. So you'll see here, this is our time code. Now let's grab this laser beam group here and we'll just drag it so that it starts at our one second. So now if we move our playhead back, you'll see there's no laser beam. Hit the spacebar to play. 
and we've got our laser beam that appears. Good. So what we need to do now is place our laser beam. So we're going to bring it. We want it to come out of our cannon. Now we need to resize it. We need to think about how laser beams you know, behave when they get shot. So they're really small when they first come out. Actually, let's change our zoom to 100%. Now we can place our laser beam to come out of the cannon. Maybe it's a little thinner. So if we click out here, we can see that's where our laser beam is. Click on here again. You can move it, place it where you want. Good, right there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come to our inspector. So click on that tab, and we're going to go to properties. So what we're going to do is we're going to set keyframes. So we've already talked about keyframes. Keyframes allow us to change different features. So for example, position or scale, so the size of the object over periods of time. So right now we've set our laser beam to be this size, this position. So we're going to put a keyframe there so that this is its starting point. So now what we're going to do is using your right arrow, we're going to click over maybe three frames. So now you'll see we're now one second and four frames. What we'll do is now pay attention to your keyframe indicators here as we drag our laser beam because it's shooting out of our cannon and it's growing. Right? You'll notice that we have new keyframe indicators, so it automatically adds keyframes for you after having placed that first one. Good, so let's assume that this is about the length that you want your laser beam to be. Let's go back to, let's say, 50%. So now we've shot our laser beam. It initially started as a small laser beam. Now it's growing out of the cannon. And now we'll move over, let's say, another, let's go to maybe 113 in terms of the frames. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drag that laser beam. And in that time period, it's moved our target. That's going to make kind of an initial contact. Good. Now if we click out here, click in the middle, and let's bring our playhead back to the beginning and let's watch it. Good. So nice kind of crisp. It grows nicely. If we watch it, it moves at a pretty good pace. So now what we need to do is we need to get to a point where, again, our laser beam has just made contact. Oops, so let's say 112. Laser beam has just made contact with our target. Now what we need to do is we need to have it explode. So we're going to add, again, a new group above everything. Let's double click and we'll call it explosion. Now we're going to go back to our library and we're going to choose particle emitters and pyro and we will choose big blast same thing we're going to click and drag it into our explosion group perfect now the explosion group needs to be resized so let's bring that Want to bring it over our object. The other thing that I forgot is by putting it in a group, it added it right to the beginning. So we see here this whole explosion group is at the beginning. What we want to do is we want to drag it over to our playhead. So click on the top here, so let's bring it to here. So now you'll see our explosion starts when the laser beam makes contact. And actually, let's make it a little bigger so that it completely covers our target. Good. There. Okay. So now, if we watch. Okay. So. Good. 
skip. So a couple of things we need to work on that I forgot is our laser beams. So let's go back. Let's just hide this explosion. So check on that. Now, when our laser beam makes contact, we need to make this laser beam get smaller. So we need to go back to our inspector. Zoom in. And the way a laser beam gets smaller is it shrinks from the back, right? Because it's going into the object. Good. And then we'll do a few more frames. Let's go to maybe 117. We'll add a keyframe at our opacity so that for this keyframe it's fully visible. The next keyframe, so 118, we'll add another keyframe and we'll drop the opacity so it completely disappears. And now, if we go back to the beginning, and we watch the laser beam, it'll disappear. Now let's see what it looks like with our explosion back in the mix. Yeah, not too bad. We can still play around with the timings of it, but that's pretty good. And now we need to make our item disappear. So at this point, it's when it's fully kind of engulfed in flames. Let's go back to our top footage here. And again, it's just the opacity, so how see through it is. So we'll put in a keyframe there. So at this moment in time, it's fully visible, 100%. Let's go over one more keyframe. So one more frame, we'll add a keyframe and then drop our opacity all the way down. So it completely disappears. But since we have that same footage, same frame without the canister there, it will look as if it exploded and disappeared. Perfect.